I'm excited to see that there are now two new versions of the Raspberry Pi Pico, the microcontroller from the same people that brought you the credit card sized Linux computer which cost $35. The Raspberry Pi Pico came out about a year and a half ago. It's a very cheap microcontroller based around their own designed RP2040 chip. It's easy to program in both C++ and MicroPython and I've used it for a few different projects myself. I'm going to introduce the new models and at the end of this video will be a quick example of how you can use the new Pico W. When the Pico was released the one thing that was lacking was connectivity which has restricted its use. At a time where everything is going online it was frustrating not being able to connect to the Pico using Wi-Fi. There have been some ways of getting the RP2040 to connect to a wireless network. The first is to use a board which combines the RP2040 and the ESP32 wireless module. This is exactly what Arduino did and I used that for a port of my wireless pixel server project. Another is to combine a Pico with an external ESP32 which is something I used with the Pimeroni Pico wireless pack. You could also pair the Pico with a Raspberry Pi computer which is something I've demonstrated using UART but also available using SPI or I2C. But this has now changed with the new model. There's now a Raspberry Pi Pico W with a W standing for wireless or Wi-Fi. It allows you to connect to a wireless 2.4 GHz network and opens up the Pico to the world of IoT. If this is exciting for you as it is for me then please give this video a thumbs up and help share the message about this new Pico. I said there were two new versions the other is not quite as exciting, but still very important. The second version is the Pico H, which has headers pre-soldered to it. These are useful for connecting to a breadboard or for add-ons such as the Pimeroni packs. For experienced makers, it's usually easy enough to solder headers onto the Pico, but this could make a big difference for new makers and for schools. They are also planning to release a Pico WH next month with the benefits of both wireless and pre-soldered headers, so that's something to look forward to. All these models are reasonably priced, with the Pico W priced as $6, which puts it less expensive than most of the microcontroller boards, including the ESP32 development boards, which have been a popular wireless board so far. So let's take a look. This is the new Pico, and as you can see, it's the same shape and size as the original Pico. It's mostly laid out the same, with the extra block being the Infineon CYW43439 wireless module. The chip has Wi-Fi for 2.4 GHz as well as Bluetooth, although only Wi-Fi is supported at the moment. The one notable difference is that the debug pins have moved nearer the centre of the board to allow the antenna to be at the bottom of the board. There are still no components on the underside of the board and with the castellated edges you could solder this on top of another PCB. However, for most you'll want to solder some headers onto it. And here's one I've prepared earlier. Soldering isn't too difficult. I've created videos on soldering the headers onto a Raspberry Pi Zero and this isn't much different. I suggest you mount the headers into a breadboard when soldering to help to keep them in line. If using a micro MicroPython, then you'll need to download a new version of the MicroPython UF2 file, which is available from the Raspberry Pi website. As well as updating for the new Wi-Fi, this adds uRequest, which is the MicroPython version of the URL lib library, and pip, allowing you to install new modules. One thing that's not yet available is a MicroPython image for the packs that you can get. Many of my modules or packs that I use are from Pimeroni and they provide their own image. It would be useful if that is updated or perhaps if they could instead package their libraries into pip form so they can be installed on the standard MicroPython image. Either way I'm sure they're going to look at that in the future. I'm going to show an example myself but before I do are there any projects that you'll be making with the new PKW? Has this helped inspire you? Or have you created some already? Please let me know in the comments. For this example, 
I'm creating a simple voltmeter. This is based on one of my first projects with the original Pico, which I combined with the Raspberry Pi. This makes use of the analog inputs on the Pico. Note that these pins are only safe for up to 3.3 volts, so don't try and connect them to anything higher than that. This is only a very basic example at the stage. I hope to upgrade some of my existing projects to use the Wi-Fi and also create some new ones in the future. And for this, I've just created a simple web page. It auto refreshes every two seconds and the web server runs on the Pico. Whenever the page is refreshed, it reads the values of the three analog input pins, ADC0, ADC1 and ADC2. For the purpose of the demonstration, I've put two 5 kilo ohm variable resistors on a breadboard and connected those across the Pico's 3.3 volt output power supply. These are connected as a potential divider and the central pin connects the appropriate analog to digital input pins, ADC0 and ADC1. The display is very basic at this stage. But this is just a simple example and the entire code is less than 100 lines, which is quite impressive considering this is an entire web server in this code. You can download the source code from my website, which is linked to in the description. The code is based on an example code from the Raspberry Pi with some additional code that I've added to read the ADC pins. This is just a starter. I'll be using the PicoW more in future. So if you're interested in finding out more, please click on subscribe and click the notification icon to get notified of my future videos. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.